Hey everybody, this is Fago Franklin III, and I'm here with former NBA player Charlie Ward. First and foremost, how are you doing today? I'm doing just fine, sir. How are you? I'm trying to hang in there, man. It's a little bit rainy down in the Seattle area, so I'm just trying to stay a little bit warm out here. Uh, well, it's good to be inside if it's raining. Amen to that. <laughs> so I know you do a lot of things within the community. Um, what does it mean to you that you could be a positive impact for your community? Uh, well, I hope I'm um, positive impact. Some people may think differently. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I uh, work to, you know, just I've had great experiences um, over the course of my time. And being a Christian, um, I think we just have to make sure that we are being who our coach is, you know, being a uh, resemblance of our coach and um and so we're not perfect just like anything um but our goal is to 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 bring positivity uh help people or help us be unified in a lot of ways because you know on on all teams you're gonna have some that agree and some that disagree Uh, but when it's all said and done we still have to continue to move forward and live, you know, in unity um, and understand that people come from different uh, walks of life. Uh, but we all have a we all have a role to play to be able to help us move forward. How has your faith molded you into the person that you are today? Um, well, it's definitely given given me a perspective on life uh, that. Uh, allows people to to share their thoughts with me and I can mm. filter what I want mm. and <laughs> start what I don't want uh, from it and allow the scriptures to um, be my guide and so mm. you know that's uh you know that's like the blueprint uh, so, uh, when you go and look in the mirror at the scriptures, it should mirror your life. And if it's something that you don't like, <laughs> you don't discard the mirror. <laughs> mm. You have to change what's in the mirror. Um, and so I think that's something we just have to understand. And that's kind of how my life has been uh, shaped by my experiences, uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, but when it's all said and done, it's to glorify God uh, because that is normally how I've um, you know been able to overcome mm-hmm. you know, life life uh, ills and also uh, remain you know work to remain humble um, because I know that uh, if you become too proud <laughs> at some point in time you're gonna get humble so why well, I just try to work towards you know staying humble. So what was one of your favorite memories that you had? I know you had so many different memories, you know, playing in the NBA, um, as well as being a community uh, person. But what is your favorite memory that you have that is something that you could say, hey, you know, I accomplished this? Um, well, it's <laughs> quite a, you know, there, there are, I guess, a few uh, memories that, you know, there was this time where, and this is this is this, this how God works. There was this time my freshman year in college. Mm-hmm. Um, we went to the uh, Fiesta Bowl, and I was afforded opportunity to go to an FCA uh, event or like a camp. Mm-hmm. And there was this young man that. It was a Christian event. I don't know if it's FCA or not, but it was a Christian event that I was asked to come and be a part of as a counselor. Mm-hmm. This was my first meeting in college, and there was this young man who came, who came, and he was going through a tough time. Um, I didn't know his situation really at the time, and you know, one of the things you know, we were just there and we were talking through, and you know, I got an opportunity to meet him and talk with him. Um, and I ended up giving him my my Fiesta Bowl jersey. Mm-hmm. 
uh, because I just felt, you know, God led me to to give my Fiesta Bowl jersey. And just here, might have been last year, mm -hmm. um, I went to hear um, Hugh Freeze uh, speak um, at a church here in town. And there was this young lady who came up to me and said, uh, do you remember uh, this little kid that you gave your Fiesta Bowl jersey to? Mm -hmm. And I was like, uh, yes, I remember that time. Um, she's like, you know, that was my son. Wow. And, and, you know, I appreciate you doing that because that is that helped him to um, to become a better man because he was, mm -hmm. you know, I think he was may have been adopted or he was going through some tough times. And sometimes little gestures, little things, um, you never know the impact that you may have on someone. And so, you know, that was something that was not hard for me to do because um, mm -hmm. I saw a need um, and I didn't know that it was going to uplift him in that that way. Uh, but I'm grateful that I was able to be able to give, you know, a small token um, to be able to help a young man. Even if he, I don't know what he did with the jersey or where, where it is today, mm -hmm. but just the opportunity to be able to um, have a positive impact on someone's life. Uh, because, like I said, that was my freshman year, my true freshman year, and I was a punter. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, I went on to play quarterback, and it probably had a little bit more, mean <laughs> a little <laughs> bit more meaning than the punter did. Uh, but I just think, you know, that was something that I can definitely look back on and say that little gesture that God led me to do uh, made a positive impact on a young person. So what was it like just playing within the Knicks organization? Uh, what was it like? Yes, to you, to um, you. Well, for me, I, it was a great blessing uh, because, mm -hmm. you know, they gave an opportunity. Um, I, didn't, I didn't know at the time when I made the decision to keep my options open for the NBA that I would be a first-round draft pick. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I worked. Uh, to 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 gain that opportunity, and I had some uh, people advocating for me as well. Uh, but what they did for me was, of course, gave me an opportunity to play in the NBA, gave me mm -hmm. an opportunity to play in a, play on a play in a city uh, that never sleeps. But <laughs> you know, it's a great <laughs> city to play uh, play for a uh, play in because uh, mm -hmm. the fans are knowledgeable. Um, and it's a <laughs> great platform. You know, being mm -hmm. in New York City, playing in the garden each and every night, that's something that, um, you know, during that time, it was prestigious. Mm -hmm. And I was grateful to have that opportunity. Um, and then just being able to go into the community mm -hmm. and be a part of the, the different cultures that's in New York. You know, mm -hmm. I, I've, I've been to you know, the inner city to do certain uh, events um, or appearances. I've done bar mitzvahs, um, you know, and the other things. I've been in Times Square, done all the things, uh, you know, just in different cultures and just being able to see all the different cultures there in uh, New York, in the New York area was a great mm -hmm. blessing. What advice can you give some of these rookies that are coming into the NBA about handling, managing their money the right way? Uh, well, the first thing is, is uh, you definitely have to have someone that you trust mm -hmm. handling your money. <laughs> uh, that plays a big part um, because, and, and also you need to know uh, one of the things you need to know, uh, have fundamental understanding of finances. Uh, mm -hmm. so that someone can't take advantage of you um, and, you know, live according to your means. You know, if you're making a million dollars, you can't spend a million <laughs> because mm -hmm. at some point in time, that million dollars is not a million dollars, depending upon where you are. Um, and so I just think it's, it's helpful to, especially as rookies, it's just like anything else, uh, the foundation, the beginning of a career, 
uh, plays a big part in how things continue to, you know, move forward. And so if you can get a good start as a rookie, uh, you know, with your work ethic, mm -hmm. you know, integrating yourself into the NBA culture, um, the lifestyle, um, you know, some people may come in with different lifestyles, but understanding that you need to um, know that, yes, I have a lot of resources here, but I have to make sure that I'm doing it and spending it wisely, saving wisely, and then, you know, <laughs> preserving what I, what I have because you never know, mm -hmm. um, you know, how long you're going to be, you're going to have this opportunity. Um, and I just remember my rookie year and I was already kind of frugal in a sense. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I even rook, I even uh, roomed. This is how bad, I, bad it was. I roomed uh, my rookie year with my buddy, Monty Williams. And mm -hmm. so and we were both in the same boat. We were trying to save money um, and they built a friendship for us, but we were trying to save money. Um, and so um, I just, I just learned that, you know, I came into a lot of money. Um, and I was already frugal. And so I didn't overspend, you know, mm -hmm. the house, house I live in, you know, I was, a, you know, like a thousand dollars for rent. I was like, man, that's, that's a lot. You know, for, for, for <laughs> uh -huh. um, but of course, you know, that's where we lived. Um, and it was a nice apartment for me. You know, mm -hmm. it wasn't anything elaborate, uh, but it was a living according to my means. And then I moved out and got a house and, you know, we, we always lived in nice homes, but mm -hmm. not things that we couldn't afford. Um, and, and so I just say, you know, make sure that you're uh, practicing good habits when it comes to thinking about your future, because mm -hmm. you never know uh, how long you're going to be making that type of money. Mm -hmm. So after you retired from being a player, was it a smooth transition with you being a coach and being uh, doing a lot of speaking engagements? Was it a very easy transition? Uh, well, it was once I figured out that that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. uh, when I got injured my last year in the NBA with the Rockets, um, I really didn't know what I wanted to do moving forward. Uh, but my, you know, I talked to my mom and wife and, you know, it came down to, you know, all my life I've been in sports. Mm -hmm. And I thought that being a coach, um, you know, my dad was a coach and I feel like that's not what I wanted to do because I saw his, uh, you know, his journey. Um, and I feel like I was also a guy who played a lot of instincts. Um, mm -hmm. Once I started thinking about my career, uh, and looking at some of the things that I was able to accomplish, it wasn't just instincts, you know, athletic ability. You know, I've been taught a lot. Um, and so the next best thing was to get into coaching and Coach Van Gundy, who, you know, I really you know, owe my NBA career to, gave me an opportunity to end, do an internship uh, mm. with the Rockets as a coach. And for me, if I'm going to do something, I normally end up doing it, you know, full bore. Mm -hmm. So he gave me the leeway to to kind of go and come if I wanted. You know, if I wanted to go on trips, I could. But I ended up just being one of the background guys. And so I helped some of the young players that were coming into the league with some of the workouts. Mm -hmm. Um, and also help the coaches with some of the game plans. And that just gave me an opportunity to kind of see that that's kind of what I wanted to do. Um, and then the next year, uh, Patrick left to go to a different team to coach. And I chose, uh, he asked me to, you know, kind of replace him in, in some form of fashion. And so mm -hmm. that gave me an inroad to coaching. Mm -hmm. Once I got out of uh, college, I mean, out, out of the NBA, I uh, decided I wanted to have a flexible schedule, mm -hmm. coaching, and so I chose to go into high school, and I was afforded an opportunity to uh, do that uh, as a high school coach. Mm -hmm. 
um, at West Bear Christian there in Houston, Texas. And that gave me uh, what, I mean, that gave me the opportunity to learn how to be a coach. I became a head coach the second year I was there uh, in football. Mm -hmm. And and that, that experience uh, definitely has given me uh, a great understanding of how far I've come (laughs) from the first time to where I am today. Um, And just running a program and all the nuances and things that go into it. Uh, But when it's all said and done, you know, I'm grateful that I had the opportunity to, you know, kind of, you know, follow follow my dad's footsteps. Because, like I said, he was a coach. Um, While while I was growing up, he was a teacher and a coach. And so I've had opportunity to coach for the past uh, almost 10 years or so. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So when you were in the league, it was more of a physical aspect. Do you think the players that are playing right now, do you think it's a softer league right now? Uh, Softer? I mean, that's the rules have changed. Mm -hmm. Um, They want freedom of movement, uh, which is what they're, which definitely helps uh, when you have uh, guides who, can score the basketball. I'm mm-hmm. sure during our time, when I look back over the games, you you saw the Jordan uh, documentary, The Last Dance. You know, some of those games were like 83 to 70 something, mm-hmm. uh, and they were low scoring games. Uh, very rarely do you have that today, just because the guys have, you know, matured, um, have the skill level has definitely increased from the three point line, and coaches are coaching. Uh, the metrics now, the, the analytics and those types of things. And and so you have more guys that can shoot the three, and that's what they're, they're doing, and freedom of movement. But there's also a lot of um, motion offense. Mm-hmm. And then defensively, you know, there are a lot of uh, switching. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, a lot of the schemes have changed. Um, I know when I was coming along um, – you know, there wasn't that much switching. Mm-hmm. Um, there was only switching certain positions or certain, you know, players. Um, and But most of the schemes were, you know, hedge or blitz the pick and roll um, or, or those types of things. And so that's something that's changed. And you get a lot more one-on-ones, more ISO basketball with movement. Um, we had ISO basketball, but everyone was pretty much standing, watching, waiting. Mm-hmm. Uh, for whoever had the ball and that happens on certain teams but in this day and age you see a lot of guys um you know moving mm-hmm. when there's iso basketball uh to get guys eyes defensively off of the guy who has the basketball which is you know creative uh, thinking uh, but i wouldn't say it was softer we did play uh physical back back during the time but Even during my time, they started to try to find ways uh, to have more freedom of movement. Because at one point, you know, before I got there, you know, it was the Jordan rules and all these different rules, knock the guy down, you know, and you had a lot of uh, altercations. Mm -hmm. Um, And then it went from, you know, knocking guys down to getting flagrant fouls to flagrant ones. You know, if you got found, you know, knocking a guy down, on purpose Mm -hmm. um and to hand check rule went from hand check because Derek harper one of my mentors he was great at it being able to guide guys with the hand to the forearm to Mm -hmm. no hands and so it just progressively got to a point where it is today which i'm all for because freedom of movement of course is is always great um and then guys of course have gotten a lot more they're coming in physical mm-hmm. and bigger and stronger and faster in a lot of a lot of ways um and, and so the, everything is pretty much improved in a lot of in a lot of ways you know areas so you meant you just mentioned the last doctor um the last dance did it bring back so many much i mean did it bring back so much memories of you playing and some of the rivalries with the pacers as well as with the bulls um, 
it brought back some memories and, and just to see the games. Uh, some of them, some of them were before me, um, like one, one or two years, I think one year before I got there, but I definitely live the good majority of those other yeah. years. Uh, we never beat them in a series. It was very difficult to do. Uh, they had a very good team. Um, and I think the closest we may have come um, to winning where we didn't get an opportunity to play them the year that we went to the finals, uh, I think they got beat by Indiana. Mm -hmm. But it brought back the memories. Of course, it brought back a lot of old film mm -hmm. um, from the past. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, nothing else. But the games were, you know, those series, most part, were well, pretty much competitive. You know, mm -hmm. they were all competitive. Uh, we had some very good teams. They had some very good teams, not just Chicago, but Indiana, uh, the Miami Heat. That's normally our biggest rivals uh, were the Heat. Um, and, and so it was good to see, you know, just the, the competition, um, how competitive, uh, the competitive mindset of, of the teams, um, and just to see the different styles of how we used to play and how guys are playing today. So I know we have sports coming back. Um, who are your two favorite teams that are going to make the NBA Finals this year? I mean, it's a hit or miss deal now because um, it is so hard because with the testing, mm -hmm. um, you never know. Um, you know, I've heard that, you know, two guys test positive, test negative one day, and then a couple of days later, they may test positive. Mm -hmm. And so I know they have different tiers of uh, quarantine, you know, um, mm -hmm. that I've been witnessing. And so it's really, a, you know, <laughs> who's mm -hmm. going to have all their, their players there um, and who's going to get on a roll um, is really going to play a big part. And so this is really a year that you never, you, you never know. Um mm -hmm because it, it comes down to who's there um, on that team. Because a key uh, member, uh, what I just mentioned about the, the testing piece, if they're in the middle of the season, in middle of the season meaning mm -hmm. you know, a week or two, mm -hmm. um, if there are any key players that test positive during that time, you know, they have to quarantine for a certain amount of time and they may miss some games, which in a shortened season, Mm -hmm. It's very, 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 very key. So what advice, and this is the last question, what advice can you give players as well as youth about just uh, staying true to themselves, not allowing anybody to define who they are and making their dreams happen? Um, well, first, first foremost, you have to be confident in who you are, you know, as a person, as a player. Um, and work on your craft. You know, a lot of times we can think one thing, but we got to still put in the time and effort to be who we think we are. Mm -hmm. um, the next thing is be coachable. Uh, I think, you know, if we're going to, if you're going to be the great player that you want to be, uh, you got to be willing to listen and learn from other people, other coaches. I mean, people who are trying to help you get to that next level. Uh, and then implement those things that they're asking you to do, work on those things that they're asking you to do. And, you know, I've been grateful to kind of pick it back. I have a, I have a, I have a great, I have a very good team. Mm -hmm. um, and over the course of the two years, you know, it's not about talent because we have talent on, on my team at Florida high, uh, but the, the guys are very coachable. And mm -hmm. so the things we've asked them to work on and, you know, those types of things, They've done that. And mm -hmm. that's the kind of mindset that you want to have moving forward um, because that's going to help you not just in basketball, but just in life in general. Because people will ask you to uh, improve something, some area of your life um, so that you can become better. Mm -hmm. And if you feel like you're at a certain place and you can't move forward, uh, then you're going to stay there for quite some time. Um, but 
you know, and just be responsible. You know, be mm-hmm. responsible to your teammate. That's a part of accountability. Uh, but be responsible by doing what you're supposed to do. Play your role the way you've been asked to play it. And I know every team, the coach has a role for you. Um, and you have to make sure that you're playing your role to the best of your ability and be a star in your role. Um, and I just I tell our guys that all the time. Um, I had to play a role. My role um, change from year to year. As a football player, you know I was a punter one year, and in basketball I was a backup guy um, one year. The next year I was a starter. Um, and of course in football I became a I was a backup and then I was a starter. Um, and so and then I went to the bench. So all the different roles that you play and you've been asked to play, you have to do it to the best of your ability, even if you don't like it. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it's probably to benefit the team uh, when it's all said and done. And so, you know, those are things that you, you know, be coachable, be responsible to your team, playing your role, um, and then work on your craft. And there you have it. Thank you for allowing me to converse with you. It's been a very much pleasure. I definitely appreciate it. And um, thank you for the words of wisdom, my friend. I appreciate you having me on. Yes, sir. Definitely have a blessed and productive day. All right. You too. Yes, sir. All right now. Talk to you later. Yes, sir. Bye-bye.